showing that the coronavirus might be transmitted through floating particles, uh, which infect people who breathe them in. Now, scientists from 32 countries recently wrote an open letter to uh, the WHO and presented evidence revealing smaller floating particles of the virus can actually be inhaled and thereby supporting the theory of the airborne transmission of the virus between people. And what is not in question, though, is that that it is spread by droplets that are expelled from the nose and mouth. And these droplets then sink onto surfaces uh, on, and on the ground. And joining us now to discuss this further is Professor Jeffrey Mpathele, who is the Vice President for Research at the South African Medical Research Council, or SAMRAC. Thanks so much for your time this morning, Professor. Good morning, uh, Sakina, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Professor, before we talk about the airborne transfer specifically, this new information does not in any way bring into question that the coronavirus is spread by droplets that are expelled, as I said in the intro there, from the nose and mouth that sinks to surfaces on the ground. Now, there's nothing wrong um, with um, the emerging evidence as far as um, you know this virus is concerned, even that is a respiratory virus. We do know that uh, other respiratory pathogens, uh, whether you know you're talking about um, um, say TB, um, uh, measles, uh, for example, um, respiratory syncytial uh, virus, be transmitted. Uh, by airborne, especially things like measles, mumps, and rubella. Um, so even chickenpox, uh, it can be transmitted by airborne, uh, and TB as well. So it's not like uh, it will be the first mode of transmission uh, for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, we do have uh, airborne transmission uh, for other pathogens. Now, Professor Mpatlele, at this stage, uh, we told it is circumstantial evidence that was presented. But please explain to us, uh, you know, assuming that it is, what else would have to be done in order to prove that this theory is actually correct? Yeah, I think um, uh, we will... Right, Professor Mpatlele's uh, picture uh, to us seems to have frozen their sound as well. So we'll try and sort that out. And um, we're talking about uh, the revelation yesterday, scientists presenting evidence to the World Health Organization, uh, speaking about uh, the airborne uh, qualities of the COVID-19 um, uh, virus. And we are speaking to Professor Mpatlele about this and uh, just finding out more with regard to the pandemic. Professor Mpatlele, I believe we have you back. Yes, um, I thought I was on air. <laughs> um, so can I just continue? Please do. Okay. So, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was just saying that um, for the ordinary person uh, in the street, uh, when you talk about airborne transmission, they want to know um, how far this virus can actually travel um, if you say it's airborne. Um, can it travel, uh, for example, more than 10 meters? Uh, is, it, is it a kilometer? And um, we need to explain exactly what um, is the definition of airborne transmission. And uh, when you look at um, the, the, the information that is emerging, uh, it looks like um, what they mean by airborne transmission uh, is that um, the virus can travel beyond two meters. And this is what we already know that uh, if you sneeze or cough or talk or even, you know, exhale, that you can actually, um, 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 you know, generate uh, respiratory um, uh, droplets. And then the sizes of these uh, respiratory droplets are different uh, because uh, you have got large ones which can just fall on the surface within a distance of um, two meters. And then you have got smaller ones, uh, the micro droplets, that can travel a little bit further. And um, it looks like it's, it will be uh, a distance of several meters. 
And my guess is that uh, maybe we are talking about something like within five meters, uh, but uh, definitely not more than 10 meters. Causes so, a risk, obviously, if you are in an enclosed environment uh, where you don't get you know, air circulation, especially you know, circulation of air from outside, uh, because uh, then uh, this uh, uh, contaminated um, uh, air will keep on circulating in the, in the, in the room and uh, it poses a risk uh, to people that are sharing the space with you. So given what you've just told us, uh, Professor Mpatlele, and looking at the protocols that we already have in place, like the wearing of masks, uh, the issue of social distancing, um, we told uh, between one and a half meters and two meters, and you saying that um, this uh, virus, if airborne, could spread maybe five meters, that's quite far. Now, if the virus is airborne, then what exactly needs to be done? Do we need any new protocols to be introduced to deal with this new information? So is, is, is exactly the concern um, of um, the public uh, because uh, what it means is that um, if uh, you are in an enclosed environment, um, how do you keep um, a fiscal distance? Um, should it be, should, should this be, or should it be more than two meters? And um, I guess um, what we need to do uh, is that um, we need to enhance what we already have. So obviously, um, you know, the non-pharmaceutical interventions that, that we already have in place, especially when uh, is extremely important now. So if you were taking, um, you know, these non-pharmaceutical interventions, not serious, this is the time that uh, you need to be very, very serious about wearing masks and, um, and, and also keeping a safe distance um, apart um, if uh, you are in a public space. But, um, you know, the safe distance now becomes a relative. Um, it, it becomes debatable because uh, we, we, you, people will always say, how safe uh, should be a distance? Um, you know, uh, between two people. Uh, definitely two meters may not necessarily be safe, but if you are wearing masks, um, it will, the mask will definitely protect you uh, from, from this. And uh, people can even, you know, wear face shields uh, because um, we know that uh, face shields can also protect people because um, uh, then these droplets will not, uh, you know, fall on the surface or, or sorry, will not fall, you know, on the face uh, of, uh, of, of, of individuals. Uh, so, so these are some of the protections that can be taken. But it remains a challenge, yes, Akina, for, in, for, for, for really indoor environments and uh, also for public transport uh, because uh, we know our mode of uh, public transport, um, taxis, buses, um, and, and given uh, the season, uh, of the year, that is winter period, uh, it may not necessarily be easy uh, to allow adequate ventilation uh, when you are traveling uh, in, a, in a public transport this time of the year. So, Professor Mpatele, what about air conditioners? Uh, because th that's always been a question, you know, and concern about circulating air. So, uh, is there any pronouncement on that in terms of people staying in confined spaces where perhaps you do not have uh, the opportunity to open windows to let fresh air in? Yeah, I think the, the, the air condition is definitely um, an important topic. Uh, because uh, most of us are exposed uh, to, to air conditions. And um, it looks like um, if you are using an air condition that draws air from outside, uh, that reduces the risk uh, because uh, you are continuously allowing you know, the, 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 the air from outside uh, to flow in and, uh, and, and also flow out. Uh, but then if you're using an air conditioner, uh, that is just recirculating the same air within the room, that will pose a challenge uh, because um, there's still a risk uh, that uh, people will be infected. And area uh, is been um, discussed before uh, when it comes to 
um, things like uh, aircrafts and so on. Uh, but, um, you know, aircrafts are considered safe uh, because um, the, the, the kind of airflow that you get in an aircraft, um, it goes through a special, you know, filter, what, what is called HEPA filter. And uh, these filters are able to really um, 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 uh, prevent uh, small particles, less than three micrometers, uh, to, to pass through. So, 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 so the, the, the air conditioning in the aeroplanes uh, are considered safe, uh, but obviously the air conditioning uh, in domestic areas and in, in, in work areas uh, may not necessarily be safe unless they can be able to uh, draw air from outside. So, so I think that is the important area that uh, needs to be revisited now. And of course, uh, serious implications for employers in that regard. And uh, just raising those questions again about the protocols that are already in place and whether they are sufficient given the new evidence that's coming to light. But we also heard from the World Health Organization, Professor Mpaklele, that the virus is showing no signs of slowing down. So what does this mean? We are sitting now in a situation whereby Gauteng is now officially the epicenter of COVID-19 in South Africa. What can we do to better prepare ourselves to deal uh, with what we are faced with right now? It's, it's, it's a huge uh, challenge uh, because uh, we know very few countries have been successful uh, to contain uh, the virus. And um, what needs to be done um, is just to make sure that um, we cooperate um, as uh, communities. Um, we, 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 we take uh, these non-pharmaceutical interventions seriously because there, there, there isn't any form of prevention we have other than you know, the non-pharmaceutical prevention uh, at the moment. So um, we need to make sure that um, we adhere to the protocols um, of um, really wearing masks and um, doing everything possible uh, to keep ourselves safe and, um, and, and, and just avoid uh, mingling with other people if you feel that um, you have got symptoms suggestive of uh, you know, coronavirus. So, so, so it's, it's up to us, uh, Sakina. Uh, it's going to be up to society uh, to assist uh, the government uh, to contain this disease. Uh, it's, it's not about what the government should, should do. Uh, to help the people to contain the disease. And because um, the government can do so much, but if our behaviors are not going to change, um, we will not be able to win. And the final one there, um, Professor Mpatlele, with regard to uh, the peak in the pandemic, uh, do you have any idea, as Gauteng, uh, for example, when can we expect to see a peak, and of course in other provinces and the country, when is South Africa expected to reach its peak? It is hard to tell uh, because, um, you know, we, we can have um, a peak and, um, and, and then we have got, um, um, you know, uh, of uh, cases again. <laughs> Uh, but um, looking at um, what is happening and, um, and, and maybe at drawing lessons from Western Cape, uh, it could be that um, uh, towards the end of uh, August um, and, and around September, this is where we're going to see the peak uh, in Gauteng. Uh, but uh, the, I, I doubt very much that, uh, you know, July, uh, will be the month where we will peak uh, in terms of number of cases. Oh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and that was a vice uh, president for research at the South African Medical Research Council, Professor Jeffrey Mpatlele, discussing uh, the WHO statement that evidence has now been presented that the coronavirus may well be airborne as well as other COVID-19 related issues. Sana for your latest news.